Hey, what's up, everybody, and welcome back to the Writing with Sean YouTube channel. Real quick, before we get to the video, I just wanted to let you know that I had forgotten to turn on the podcast mic, uh, so the audio is just going to be kind of average today, but I think you'll enjoy the conversation nonetheless as we talk a little bit about the Wheel of Time, and then, of course, get into some of the things that uh, I've been working on uh, through this process of trying to write my first fantasy novel in 90 days. So I hope you'll enjoy the conversation, even with some average audio for today's video. Thanks for watching. What's up, fellow storytellers, and welcome back to the channel where we talk about writing. And specifically right now, we're talking about the 90-day writing challenge, which is 75,000 words in 90 days, getting that first manuscript done. And uh, it's been... Crazy. And this is week five. And uh, honestly, I'm just thankful uh, to be still hanging on and still going forward and still feeling motivated and still overcoming obstacles and things like that, which we're going to talk about uh, today. But I'm going to do things kind of in reverse. Uh, typically, we talk about the progress of the novel, word count, and things that I'm trying to work on get better at that kind of stuff. We're going to talk about that at the back end uh, of the video today. Um, and instead, we're going to start with a conversation, just a small one about the Wheel of Time that I have just started officially reading. And I know that it seems absurd to be a fan of fantasy, um, to be writing a fantasy novel and have not yet read the Wheel of Time, or any of it, for that matter. Uh, but so I have recently started that. I'm doing a book club with a friend of mine, and so we're going to be going through uh, the Wheel of Time. And uh, it's a kind of a bittersweet situation. Um, well, first let me say this. Uh, there's a quote from Stephen King that goes like this, If you want to be a writer, you must do two things above all things. Two things above all things. That's read a lot and write a lot. And so it seems like a simple quote, but uh, there's a mountain of truth involved there. And for me, I've made the decision that if I'm going to do this and I want it to be good and I want to, su to be successful, I want to actually get to the end of this project and feel good about it, then I'm going to have to be 100% all into this thing. And for me, that means I've got to find time, lots of time, uh, to be reading, uh, specifically in the genre that I'm writing in, which happens to be epic fantasy right now. Which means we got to figure out how to make that happen. And as all of you know, especially if you're a little older, you have a family, you have a career, you have responsibilities, you have all these things. There's a lot of things jockeying for your time, a lot of things battling for your attention. And so you just kind of have to murder the things that are not high priority and make the decision to make the thing that you need to be doing, whether you want to or not, the thing you need to be doing needs to become a priority in order to be successful with whatever it is that you're trying to do. So in this instance, it means that my evening entertainment is now murdered um, with the exception of the weekends. So through the week, I'm not going to be doing much of anything other than coming home after working all day, relaxing, resting my mind, having dinner with my wife, whatever, and then ending the night reading as opposed to finding some mindless entertainment, which some would argue that's mindless entertainment, but this is actually lending to what I'm trying to accomplish. So mindless entertainment would be like TV shows, video games, things that, that, that are uh, scrolling through social media, things that are jockeying, battling for my attention. And Monday through Friday, dead, right? Because this book right now is the priority, getting that first draft written. And of course, on the weekends, I've allowed myself to be lax with those things. Uh, but through the week, it's business. It's purely business. So I started reading The Wheel of Time. And as I begin to say, it is a bittersweet type of situation. It's sweet because uh, Robert Jordan is clearly brilliant. And 
Uh, I'm glad to be going through this series as I'm trying to write my own because it's helpful to see good writing, a good dialogue, um, good world building, a good story, good magic. I mean, right, all those things. Uh, the bitter part is, is uh, number one, when you're trying to write a book, reading someone like Robert Jordan uh, makes you realize how terrible you are at writing uh, and how far <laughs> many of us, including myself, have to go. The other bitterness is, is my previous first love when it comes to fantasy novels. The Wizard's First Rule, Terry Goodkin. It's like waking up one day and you're no longer a little kid and you've realized that your dad really isn't that tall. He really isn't that strong. He really isn't that smart. He's not that great at baseball, right? Like you're finally discovering the truth and you realize it's been a fraud all along. So that's kind of the, the bitter part. Um, I'm realizing that good can Man, he stole a lot of ideas. And look, there's not a fantasy author out there who's not borrowing from their experiences and their influences. And that's perfectly fine. Um, but he has uh, made it pretty clear that he wasn't, he didn't borrow from anybody. You know, he, you know, he was kind of I obviously, my writing is being influenced by all the things, including Terry Goodkin's writing. And no question, it'll be impacted by Robert Jordan's writing. And that's the reason that we're reading so much is because we're trying to learn and these things influence and inspire us. Uh, but then there's just flat out Jack and somebody's work. And the more I learn about the Wheel of Time, uh, the more frustrated I get with my beloved series. And the reason why it's beloved is because it was the first one I ever got into. And The Wizard's First Rule will always be my favorite book because of that, the, for the nostalgia, if nothing else. But the more I read The Wheel of Time, the more I realize that, uh, yeah, you start to notice the difference between good writing and great writing. Um, you also realize that the show, Wheel of Time, the TV series is complete and utter nonsense and is nothing like the book at all. Uh, yeah, yes, there's some familiarities there, but, uh, and I'm not going to go into all of it because I just really don't want to hear all the comments from people who are so mad that I dared to point these things out, uh, that the show is more worried about pushing certain agendas than they are about actually honoring what is written in here. And I only had to get through the first hundred pages to start realizing that pretty quickly. So there's the bittersweet, but I'm excited uh, to read. Th uh, I expect to have the first book done pretty quickly um, because I'm finding it's not too hard to read and I'm really getting through there and I'm excited to see where this goes. I'm also a huge fan of Brandon Sanderson. I've read The Way of Kings. I've read most of the second book to that series. Uh, it's just, I don't have all day, Brandon. I have a, I have a life. I, yeah, I can't get through those things very, very quickly, very easily. Uh, so I'm taking on this series, and uh, if you want me to do more videos as I finish books and kind of just give you my thoughts on each book, I'd be happy uh, to do that, uh, as well as give you thoughts on the current TV series. If you dare, if you really want to hear the truth, um, I suspect that many don't. Um, we live in an age where truth is not well received any longer. Uh, so I'll leave that for you guys to tell me in the comments what you think about that. All right, let's talk about this week in writing. Hey guys, real quick, I just want to let you know that the Patreon page is live and you can get there by going to patreon.com slash writing with Sean. And that's where you can go and support the podcast for a very small subscription and help it grow and all of those things. But additionally, starting in October, I'm going to be adding in exclusive content. And this is going to be content surrounding how to use certain tools and things like that for writing, as well as uh, videos for up 
uploading your book into Amazon and all those kind of technical things uh, that can be a real pain uh, that authors really don't want to have to bother with. I'm going to be creating content uh, to make that really, really easy for you. And starting in October, uh, we'll be doing at least one video a month, hopefully more than that. Uh, But it all kind of depends on how the support goes. So please go to patreon.com slash writing with Sean. Now let's get back to the podcast. All right. So this week, let me take a quick glance at my computer here. I am currently sitting at 29,261 words. That leaves me with a goal of still writing 957 words per day if I'm writing five days a week. And that puts me at 39% to goal. By the way, if you go to the website, seanosmanauthor.com, I have a progress bar that shows you how far along I am in the process. So if you go there right now, it'll say that I am at uh, 39%. And then I have a countdown clock going on uh, for the goal of being done by December 1st, first manuscript uh, being done December 1st, uh, which is 66 days, 35 minutes and 33 seconds from the time that I am recording this. So you can keep track of all of that. Now I keep saying this, if you're just now coming across the videos and you're wanting to start, just make it 90 days from now. Um, And of course, we'll be continuing this conversation in this series as things go on, because then I'm going to have to start talking about the process of rewriting. Um, Which brings me to something I decided to talk about today. And that is, we've talked a little bit about point of view. And uh, one of the things that I was trying to avoid, well, let's start with two things. Yeah, I'll start with this. One of the things I was trying to avoid, just because I'm inexperienced with fantasy writing and I didn't want the book to be overwhelming, uh, was to avoid too many perspectives, too many point of views, right? Like I kind of have my two main protagonists, if you will, and I was mostly just going to write from their point of views, which is still going to be true. But here's the problem that you run into and something I'm learning and I'm having to think about more and I'm trying to do a better job of. I noticed that with one of my scenes, it really felt like, so you have a, I have a dialogue going on, but you know, my protagonist, he's still kind of learning what the situation is, where the magic is concerned and the world is concerned. And then I have this other character that he's interacting with, having a dialogue with, who's very well versed and known knows a lot about what's going on, and that character is explaining a lot of these things. The problem is, is instead of a dialogue, it really kind of feels like a monologue, like just a monologue info dump from the one character, and my other character who's listening is not engaging much. And so that's something I'm I'm definitely starting to think about, and I'm going to have to think a lot about when I go for the rewrite is making sure that you're getting all the details and information you want out of your characters, but without it sounding like a monologue, like a one character monologue. It needs to actually look and feel and sound when you're reading it like a dialogue. So that's something I've been thinking about. And really, I'm finally starting to understand why people like Robert Jordan, why people like Tolkien, why people like Brandon Sanderson have a bazillion different characters and a bazillion viewpoints and points of view. And it's because that's the best way to really tell the story and info dump without doing crazy monologues by one character, right? Because you, the, you can learn more about the character that we're dealing with by looking at the world through their eyes And you can learn more about maybe like your main characters through the perspective and point of view of like a side character. And so I've just decided, okay, I have to do it. It's the only way that the story is going to be good. It's the only way that we're not going to just have constant monologues where my characters are just being endlessly filled in on the story. Um, They're just just going to have to be multiple point of views and... Uh, that's just a conclusion that I came to today. So 
let me get to, I know I'm all over the place. So let me get to how the writing went last week. Last week was hard. I only got 3,000 of my 5,000 words in, uh, but thankfully I already had a bunch banked. Like I was already kind of ahead of the game, so it didn't hurt my goal um, and progress. And then yesterday, which was Monday, I was able to get 2,000 in, then I was able to get 1,000 in today, which is Tuesday. Uh, and then I was able to do a bunch of plotting during the 30-minute treadmill run that I did this afternoon. And so during that 30-minute treadmill run was when I was really thinking about, okay, here's all the side characters that I need to make sure I do an actual point of view from because it's critical to the story and where I'm trying to get an end. And... Utilizing time like that, like the time that you're exercising or the time that you're commuting back and forth to work to do your plotting is the best thing you can possibly do. And what was beautiful about this morning is, is I wrote and kind of developed a pretty good chapter uh, introducing my antagonist. And I was kind of shocked at where it went and the personality of this person. Uh, shocked that I was thinking of such craziness uh, and uh, how it turned out. But then I was thinking, man, I really, the only way I can tell the story is if I, you know, I've got to get other characters in here. I've got to get other perspectives and uh, to be able to fill in all those gaps. And when I was running on the treadmill, because I just got done writing, I was really able to get into that mindset of just, here, I'm on the treadmill, I'm clocking the time exercising, and I was just thinking about my book. And as soon as I got off the treadmill, I went right back in and just did a short little tiny outline uh, in my software uh, for, and I just made a list. These are the people that we need to do a perspective from. Boom, 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 boom. Here's three main events that I want to happen um, that we've got to get to. Boom, boom, boom. And so that's kind of how I'm coming to the story. So like we've talked about in previous weeks, it's a lot of discovery writing um, and then plotting kind of on the back end. So it's like discovery writing. Oh, this is where this is going. Okay, I need to make sure I get here. And then I start plotting. That's just me personally, how I'm approaching it. Maybe with the next book I write, uh, it'll be completely plotted out. I don't know. Uh, but this process seems to be working for me. So really, that's the thing that I wanted to talk about this week that I'm working on. Making time to read, which means, again, being disciplined, cutting out the nonsense, cutting out the things that are really uh, fighting for my attention, and then making sure that the conversations between my characters are dialogues and not a monologue, and then just embracing the fact and this is probably going to increase my word count. If I get this done in 75,000 words, I'll be shocked. I think I'm looking at more like 100,000, to be honest. Um, but the goal was 75,000 by December 1st, so we're going to get there. And I would my goal is still to finish the first manuscript by then. So if I feel like it's getting there, I'm right now I'm in the hardest part, you know, the middle of the book. So I'm hoping once I get to the end, I'll just be able to burn it, you know, three, two, 3,000 word days and maybe even maybe even more and, and get to that end. Um, but embracing the reality that there's just going to have to be multiple perspectives in order to really get a good story uh, because we can't just have constant monologue and info dumps to our main characters, if that makes sense. So there you have it. That's the, that's the stuff I'm working on. And it's not even really the things I had originally wanted to talk about today. I guess we're going to have to push that off probably to next week. Um, I was one of the things I was worried about when doing this uh, channel is that I would struggle with things to discuss and, and there's just endless things to learn, endless things to practice, endless things to implement. Uh, so I'm, I'm excited about the channel and I'm also very excited to see where this book ends up going. And uh, I appreciate you guys all coming along on the journey. If you like these videos and these conversations, do me a favor and uh, hit that subscribe button. Uh, leave a comment down below and uh, I'll speak to you soon. Keep writing, keep trying.